Labor Days. What is Labor Day 2014? A day like all other days, not in honor of workers, but in cruel irony of workers' impotence and defeat. Yeah, celebrate Labor Day, sure. But attack unions, denigrate union organizing, while calling for wage cuts and deregulation. Witness today's unprecedented assault on teachers and their unions. They're called lazy and incompetent. And even Hollywood joins the fray with a recent movie. Remember Bad Teacher? You think you'll be seeing Bad CEO anytime soon? I didn't think so. Once again, Hollywood sides with the powerful whilst being labeled liberal. Workers are working harder today and getting considerably less in return. Wages are low and respect for working people is even lower. Unions are demonized. Labor Day, a day like all others, when labor and its unions are spit on. From Imprisoned Nation, this is Mumia Abu Jamal. These commentaries are recorded by Noel Hanrahan of Prison Radio. We got an excellent show here today. But first, I want to say the views and opinions and that of the arena does not pick that of Comcast, its staff, or affiliates. With that being said, viewer discretion is advised. Today's title, The Hunt for Governor. (laughs) (laughs) And to my right, we have the esteemed gentleman. We got back on the show. And... Introduce yourself. Well, thank you for having me back again. It's great to be here with all of you. Um, Well, I'm Andrew Hunt. Uh, I have a Georgia Tech PhD in engineering. Differentiates me very much from the other people running who are both attorneys. I want to work for the people of the state of Georgia. I don't want to work for the establishment. I want to work for the people here. I want to get things right. Take government back. Okay. I like that. To his right, we got King of the Bible thumpers. <laughs> I am your servant. Thank you for allowing me to be in the arena. Praise the most high. Yeah. Yo, praise this gavel. <laughs> <laughs> praise this gavel. Yes, sir. <laughs> you know, because your Bible teaches you don't respect the man. No, you don't respect this gavel. Yes, sir. Uh, all right. All right. Here. Right there. All right. And to his right, we got Vince and Chiefs. Yes. Welcome, Dr. Hunt. Thank you for being on the show. I'm Vincent Cheeks, actor and activist. And to my right, I'm Dr. Thrice. I'm just have, I just happened to be in the studio and they invite me to come on the show. I ain't getting paid. That's <laughs> okay. And with that, we're going to jump right into our show. I have a brief announcement first. Uh, we say no more. Uh, I call for a month of resistance to mass incarceration, police terror, repression, and the criminalization of a generation. We call for a massive month of resistance to mass incarceration in October of this year, a month that can impact all of society, one that can open the eyes of millions of people to the need to end this new Jim Crow. In October 2014, our resistance to mass incarceration must reverberate across the country and around the world. There must be powerful demonstrations nationwide on October 22nd, a national day of protest to stop police brutality, repression, and the criminalization of a nation. So, for the month of October, uh, October 5th, we'd like, we're asking pastors to incorporate mass incorporation uh, into their sermon. That is October 5th, Sunday, October 5th. Uh, October 11th, we will have a concert featuring Jasiri X and a panel discussion. Uh, Hopefully that panel discussion will include Dr. Cornell West himself. That'll be from 1 to 5 p.m. Of course, the march, uh, the rally at Woodruff Park at 4 p.m. on October 22nd. And on October 30th, we're calling for everyone to wear orange in protest of mass incarceration. And hopefully we'll get into this a little bit with Dr. Hunt uh, a little later in the show. And with that, we're going to go right into the meat uh, with Dr. Hunt here. Um, I was on your website and I read something about the job powerhouse plan. And in the job, with the job powerhouse plan, you say you want to get unemployment to under 5%. So can you tell us rough, roughly what the uh, unemployment rate is right now and what is the job powerhouse plan and how will it work? Now, Georgia right now is the second highest unemployment rate in the whole nation. Oh, wow. 
7.8%. It's, okay. I think whoever leads the state to that high of an unemployment deserves to be fired. <laughs> <laughs> Shots fired. Shots fired. <laughs> So uh, yeah, we we need to get it where unemployment is low. I mean, we that brings family stability. It brings uh, people, you know, happiness and welfare into the society to have low unemployment. Okay. So it's the, actually my number one initiative okay. uh, to create low unemployment in our uh, state. We should be. We have a lot of great people. We have a great location. A lot of things going for the state, and there's just no reason that we're this bad off. And so what I want to do is get away from the crony capitalism that they're running right now. So right now, you have big lobbyists for these big companies that come in, spend lots of money lobbying, and then they get these big deals of tens of millions, sometimes hundreds of millions of dollars of taxpayer money going to them. Right. Okay? And they come in with their big factory jobs here or there in the state. Well, it doesn't go into the neighborhoods that need it the most. It doesn't go into the small towns that are drying up in our state. And you know who pays all those taxes? We, we do. do. <laughs> Every time we buy something, pay a sales tax. Every time we buy a gallon of gas, pay some gas tax. And our uh, income taxes are property taxes even if you don't own property you're renting right that still that ends up in property taxes going in okay okay so all of us are paying for these big corporations to have these breaks well we need to incentivize jobs themselves okay and we want to incentivize only jobs that are full-time we're tired of these temporary and part-time jobs okay. and what's being forced down True. us now okay and we want good pay we don't want minimum wage jobs coming in so my program is set at eleven dollars an hour or higher only okay full-time jobs okay and then what would happen is the company or person because people can hire people too rather than just corporations right so I'm, the, I want this for small businesses so you're talking about eleven dollars being the minimum wage well I, I'm not gonna no. set the minimum wage I'm right. just saying there just will be no incentive for if someone wants to pay less than that I'm not gonna give them any incentive that's for sure oh, okay. so he's saying the, the basic uh, well the lowest rate the hill incentivize for is eleven dollars an hour right okay right okay. Okay. You have to pay at least uh, to get this. And then what they would get is reimbursed to them what they pay in actual payroll taxes into the federal government. So this is about 8 or 9%. Okay. Of what a pay is, so it's a very strong incentive. What we'll we'll see though is you're going to see a lot of higher paying jobs incentivized with this because the more they pay someone, the bigger this tax that they have okay. to pay is. Okay. And that's what we want. We want quality paying jobs. So this focuses on that. First of all, if you pay less than eleven. I'm not going to incentivize that. No way. I like that. And then, if you pay more, guess what? More incentive. Mr. Okay. Doctor, that sounds like some wage equality. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we talked about that last time. So I, 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 I appreciate you considering that. You know, um, but one thing I want to ask you real quick, because just in North Carolina, there were two brothers that were sentenced to 30 years. One was sentenced in death row, and they had a committee to basically bring forth DNA. Both of these gentlemen were innocent, so they brought them out. So my concern here, and I, and I do admire Georgia, one of the leading states that allowed convicted felons to vote. So one thing I have seen as a fact is that Baltimore took away, they banned the box, meaning sign a thing on the convicted felon, and the oh, employment okay. rate went up 66%. Oh, okay, because of that one box. That one box. Yeah. And 60 cent, I mean, it was it just spiked up the jobs. Right. Now, you know, Baltimore is a rough city. It is. You know, it's up there with Chicago, you know, up there with Louisiana, you know. Yeah. Baton Rouge, yeah. DC. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, 66%. I mean, you got the numbers right there, to, you know. Um, and then you would have a nice voting block, you know. I mean, I mean it's 8 million people in prison. Mm -hmm. You know, and all those people want to come out eventually. So you know, you know, they want jobs and they want to be able to vote and you know do all these good things. Well, our incarceration rates are just ridiculous. Mm -hmm. If you look Mass at the U.S. Yeah. the U.S. <laughs> average incarceration rate for males from 1925 to 1975 was 0.2 percent of males. It's mm -hmm. now here in the state of Georgia at one percent, five times that historic U.S. average, mm -hmm. and we're about five times what most industrialized nations are too. Mm. It's ridiculous. Wait a minute, you mean to tell me we got more people in prison in China? <laughs> <laughs> On a percentage they land, China. The land of the free? Yeah. Oh my <laughs> goodness. <laughs> if I may say something. Please do jump in, sir. If I, 
<laughs> if I may say something, mass prison, mass imprisonment. No, no. Let me help you a little bit. Don't say too long now, <laughs> Trasher. Okay. We got time to go here. All right, all right. He <laughs> been too long. Get out of there. <laughs> <laughs> In Georgia alone, that is one of the most look at the business. That's right. That you can be into. Oh, well, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mass incarceration? You That's better it. believe it. What about military it. industrial complex? Don't make no harm. Right now, prison system. That's right. It's, 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 it's like, if I get, if let's say, for instance, let me use it as a scenario. There are 500 men are coming out of prison, say, Monday. Mm-hmm. And I have a private probation office. Mm. I'll get 200 of those people. Mm-hmm. Somebody else get the other two. Mm-hmm. And somebody else get the 100. But imagine for a moment, you have 200 men each week or each month each week. bringing you $200 a week mm-hmm. or $150 a week. Mm-hmm. Now imagine for a moment, he's out of prison, but he's been sentenced for 30 years. Exactly. But out of that 30 years, he only going to have to do five. So he out, so he's outstanding for, for, for 25 years. Mm. He's going to have to pay you mm. just to uh, pay you. Mm, right. You better believe it. Right. So when we go to talking about math, this thing is well, like I said earlier, right. when you talk about Georgia and its prison system, mm. everybody get a little piece of that money. That's right. right. So why, why would Georgia allow all of a sudden convicted felons to vote there, Mr. Thrash? They don't. Oh, no, they, yes, they do. When? Since Obama started running. Convicted felons can vote in the no, state of Georgia. I worked the poll. I worked the poll. If you pay <laughs> prisoners in the state of Georgia can vote. That's right. This is a fact. You living in 1968, there, can I Mr. Thrasher. This is a fact. Can I? They are a large voting block. Doctor Hunt, is that is that it's just, correct? Straighten this out, Doctor. Please straighten me out. Okay. I am not a legal expert in this No, no, we just area. want to know. Can, can, can we just want to know. Can oh, can oh, I believe it has to do with the crime that they committed. I, okay. I, I don't think it's anyone and everyone, so but levels. I think there's, yeah, yeah I right, think so. Right, yes. so, so, okay, so basically... A convicted felon can vote. So you have right. Yeah, right. No, 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 right. no, it's a fact. Right. Yeah, it's a fact. Right. Yeah, if you if you if you convicted right felon, right. no matter what level, and I, okay, it does matter what level it is. Right. But I'm saying right. if, if can, the fact remains, if you're level two committed, right. I don't know. I'm just I'm guessing wrong. level two. Right, right. Well, no, wrong. that's level seven. Let's just say a level two felony. Okay. okay. You get out. That means you can register to, to vote. vote. Okay. But that means you have a large population of prisoners who are convicted felons that can lobby and say, you know what, we are this group and we want to be represented, we want jobs, we want this or that, A, B, and C, making demands. There. Right. Right. But okay. It still gets right back down to okay. about the dollar. Yes. So, it is crony capitalism. Okay. And that we have to end. That's what I call crony capitalism. Mm-hmm. All of these different companies and entities that make money off of government programs and systems and laws and rules oh, and regulations right. that shouldn't even exist. If you look at the U.S. Constitution and the Bill of Rights, they ignore that completely. We're supposed to have all these freedoms. We're supposed to have all these rights. They're not supposed to be able to throw us in jail for Ooh, a, a, a most of the things that they throw us in jail for. Oh, you right. asking, boy. <laughs> <laughs> asking, boy. I'm trying to be nice, but it's hard. It's wait hard. Minute. Wait a minute. Wait, let, listen here, Thrasher. Okay. <laughs> Some of the greatest men are talking about the same changes he made, you know. All but right. I mean, I understand what All you're right. saying. You're referring to the, the Kennedys and the, no, no. Uh, and the, and the Lincolns. No, you're no. trying to say there's, there's a, what I'm saying is that you look at Ferguson, mm. you look at the people. Come on. Okay. All right. <laughs> let's, let's, let's look at the Ferguson situation. Come on. At the end of the day, you want, at the end of the day, basically, we can make the change. The people don't want any trouble, is what I'm saying. Like, look at the state government, look at the feds in Ferguson. This is something that you have to look at as far as a strategy. A lot of people don't know is when the feds came in there, 
there was a stand down between the feds and the state government because True. the state did not want to release the police's information. Mm. There's also been talk about when Holder came down there, there was a, well, let me, let me just uh, say this. It's about the numbers and the state government needs the numbers. The feds need the numbers. The numbers are the people at the end of the day. That's a fact. So I'm just leaving it at that. Just, leave, just let okay. that say. I'm going to leave it at okay. that. Okay. Okay. Well, since you brought up Ferguson. All right. Uh, I want to ask All right. Dr. Hunt about that situation. Uh, just give us your brief thoughts on the whole Ferguson incident. We all know it was a uh, shooting of an unarmed black male by a white police officer. Uh, he was shot at 10 to 11 times. Six bullets hit him uh, and killed him. There was a huge uproar from the black community. Um, so just tell us, because, you know, Atlanta is a heavy populated, uh, black populated um, community. So I just want to know your thoughts on Ferguson and how Governor Dixon even responded to the whole Ferguson situation. And if there was a situation, God forbid, to ever happen like that here in Atlanta, how would uh, Dr. Hunt handle a situation like that? Well, first of all, when I would get into office, I would look at how we, our uh, police are militarized. Okay. I would try and change the culture of the police to not be that to attack the people, but to you know go after the violent crimes and also protect the people. So we, we need to just change the whole mentality and the culture of the police state into being a police force that uh, enforces the reasonable laws. And we need to and re bring back in, we need to erase a lot of the laws that are on the books. Okay. Instead of lawmakers, we need law erasers <laughs> to bring <laughs> like our that. freedoms back. Okay. And so that's the basic premise that we need to have. Now, if I was in that situation, well, first of all, Ferguson is just the straw that broke the right. Back. Right, right, right. In itself, it's just one more case that we've seen so many other cases that are, you know, in the same ballparks Correct. on the internet and also not on the internet because they weren't videotaped. Right. And we know this, so it's just, there's been just too many of these. And we just really have to correct it. So I really like it that the Atlanta police force and the mayor there has decided that they were going to put video cameras on the police. Have they, 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 they have decided. Have decided to. Oh, it's, but it's, uh, yeah. I know what's going on the, the books Atlanta. for Atlanta. Yeah. Atlanta so Atlanta's awesome. doing it too. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's yeah. great. So you're for oh, I'm, I'm okay. so for that because, you know, the, sometimes the police are incorrectly accused of things not right. happening, but other times right. they're doing things they shouldn't be doing. Correct. And so we just need a good record. Of, you know, and these cameras can't be turned off. They can't be unrecorded. Right. You know, that's what we have to have. So yeah, but can't selectively get rid of things. We're going to let you, Dr. Thrasher, get in and jump in. Brother Yang, welcome to the table. Brother. Yeah. If, 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 if that is true, you talk about putting cameras on uh, the man's lapel or wherever it may be. First, we needed cameras in the car so they could watch how the police or the state trooper handle himself. Right. But I'll never forget uh, this young black kid was stopped by the cab, by, uh, by the police, the state trooper out on I-20. The white cop pulled the door open. It was the black cop. It was all on the desk, desk camera. He grabbed him, he snatched him out, and he beat him and he beat that boy unnecessarily. But the end results of it, nothing came from it. Now, how do you justify uh, 12 people under, the, under in DeKalb County that was murdered, that was killed, and one young man was murdered by the police, and zero came from that? And not only that, even in DeKalb County, which the chief who gone down, this happened before he got in, but it, it happened while Mr. Burnham was in. Right. When this boy was in, in his apartment, they asked him to come out. When he walked out of the door with a camera yeah. in his hand, they killed him. Mm -hmm. 
So the thing of it is, I don't believe a camera can change change a man's action. It doesn't. A camera, there you go. There camera, you go. It doesn't change the action. And what it does, though, what a camera will do, it provides the necessary evidence for what's the only thing that's going to change the action of that is full participation, especially, and I'm speaking specifically for African people here in America, is our full participation in uh, asking for um, um, justice against the inappropriate behavior of the police. See, we allow too many times we get in the protest, we get in the rally, and we allow it to die there. We don't ask for citizen review boards. We don't put people in office who that we can hold upon. Like, we're here now with a, gu- a gubernatorial candidate. You know what I'm saying? So now's a prime time to see what are you going to do for Georgia, what's happening for Georgia, and if should we vote for the people that participate in the political process, that this is what we expect and this is what we're going to hold you accountable to. There's no accountability to government. You see what right. I'm saying? We, we sit here and say... You know that this it doesn't matter this and that, but at the, at the end of the day, if we don't hold these people accountable, if we don't ask for citizen review boards, if we don't ask, if we don't look up the records of these police officers who a lot of times have a history of what is the one the the police officer that they just uh, I believe is it DeKalb County police officer that uh, had broken the man's elbow and this and that. And they said before he had a, a record of abuse of uh, unnecessary rough. Oh yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. So there has to be on our part, and I'm letting go, Vince, not take over. On our part, there has to be some participation when you look at every group of people even whether they agree in politics or not when you look at the latino community coming over here the hispanic community coming over here whether they agree in politics or not and a lot of them can't even speak english they have a, a sect of, of of hispanics who go out and represent that political thing to get that political economic power that's going to be the only thing that we're going to sit here i don't care how many cameras they put on it. i agree okay i want uh yep. Yep. dr hunt can you respond to what dr thrasher said about he just doesn't believe that the body cameras will solve anything, and then well, you jump in and get it. In California, there are some areas that have instigated these uh, body cameras, and there's been a tremendous reduction in the number of complaints right. against police brutality right. in those areas. So I think it does have effect. Okay. Anyone that knows they're being watched, see, you had it in the car, but they, they would do things off. And sometimes, right. like you said, they would still do things, and but right. you, you, you reduce the number of the cases. A bad person's still going to do bad things, right. whether they're, I mean, you've seen it, where the uh, um, gangs are beating up on kids and they, they film themselves doing it and then right. they put it on the video. Right. I mean, on you the know, internet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, come on, you know. So some people, it'll, it will have a huge effect on a lot of people. It will never end everything. But we we're want to progress in the right direction. And then you're right. I agree with you about having it that we have citizen review boards, that we have uh, better um, you know, prosecution against the police, that we have real people that will really prosecute the cases and a government that will see that through, I think is one of the keys. Yeah. Well, I think another key is the political pundits actually telling us the truth. I mean, you have the communities voting for more police protection based on what they're being told <laughs> by the politicians that are being paid by the corporations who are being who are funding the police department and the military industrial complex, which has they have a familial relationship and now the police departments are being militarized to such an extent. It's uh, the people once they began to reveal what they had in their arsenal, everybody's aghast. It's like what uh, personal armored nail carrier? Uh, we're talking about having uh, these uh, the, the hand me downs from our U.S. military. Right. <laughs> Right, right. At the end of the day, we understand that the targeting for this militarized police force has been us. So for me, I could never support the system. I know you're not going to change. See, so you're an idealist. And, and that's what politicians grab onto right. the idealism of the audience and they're able to capture that because of most people in this country want freedom. Mm-hmm. They want to be equal. They want equal pay, equal justice. It's just not what the system is about. Right. And as soon as, as we actually face that reality, and then it's going to be war. But see, it's been war without reality. We just haven't been knowing we are under siege. Once we actually began to understand that the war is against us, then my question is though, but where do we really go from there? You know what I'm saying? I mean, I mean, it's like it's like Armageddon. It's like that's what I mean. I mean, it's like being in a boat. Even if you don't want to be in the boat, if you don't grab an oar and row, you just be adrift. Regardless of what you say, I don't want to be in this boat. I don't believe in this boat. You know what I'm saying? I don't even deal with the people in the boat. But you're in the damn boat. 
You know what I'm saying? So if you don't grab a oar and roll to some type of shore, you'll drift downstream or drift down river. This is what a, this is what this country is. We know historically what this country has done to us as Africans here in America. We know the role we have played. We know that even the whole capitalist system was was based off of our labor and exploitation of an African people. But regardless, but the reality of the situation is we are here. But do we join them because No, of it's that? not about it's not about joining. Okay. It's not about joining. It's about a strategy. It's about you're here. You're going to pay taxes. You're going to pay a gas bill, a light bill. You're going to be subject to uh, police repression if you don't are uh, at least policing. You're going to be subject to these things anyway. So it's about if I'm here, like Ferguson, uh, what was it? 80 percent. How many did you say one time, Vince? Like 65 percent African black population. It's 67 percent of black yeah. population. But you have uh, a police force that is represented by only, only three percent. Only, only, only black three of, black of political participation. I have right. to disagree. And the reason I say that, because I saw the results of the registration, the voter registration mm -hmm. for Ferguson for 2013. They, the Europeans registered at 55%. Right. Our people registered at 54%. So we registered. We're just not voting. I'm about to say because they we're not. Yeah, we're right. not getting that right. That's right. We're What's not, the point of registering? If you're not gonna, because you're not gonna, at the end of the day, we you are, have to vote. Right. You right. have exactly. to vote. That's we don't, so we, it's, we don't so trust the system. But it, it doesn't matter if we trust it or not. It's, it's, it's a strategy. If you go vote, and they don't do it, then you you have a legitimate complaint. Then we, that's when you take it out of just a United States realm. Then you say my human rights are being violated, mm -hmm. and you take it to a world court. You know what I'm saying? But if you don't vote, how can you say that you're being violated? And you don't vote. And the first thing they're gonna say, well, you didn't vote. Well, the vote is when we don't vote. That is our vote. See, the vast. See, we first of all we understand that we're not in a true democracy because okay. a true, true democracy is ruled by the vast majority who have a perspective that's why they call it a democracy is ruled by the majority this is an oligarchy we don't the system the vast majority of people don't vote right so that in itself is a vote because they've seen the corruption the mistreatment mm -hmm. the inequity in mm -hmm. the system so when you say we don't vote that 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 particular motion is carrying over to revolution against this system and that's why the the, the uh, what do we call it? The vigilantes mm. and all these groups, these undergroups, these subcurrent undergroups are rising, and they'll become they're buying their military equipment because it's going to be a bloodbath. Exactly, uh, but me, not in our communities. Let me. Let We're me the bleeders. Dr. Hunter, question. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Because y'all y'all talking about a lot of distrust between the people, the police and the government, which the police are basically part of the government. Thank you. Dr. Hunt, how would you go about mending those relationships with of a people that's excellent so distrustful of the system in a system that claims to be for the people? How do you bridge that gap? To, to get the people to believe in, in you and the system. Well, first of all, you all are correct. It's not representing the people anymore. Right. It is that these politicians are bought out by the lobbyists, by the people that fund them, the special interest groups that give, put millions into their campaigns, and that's who they serve in office. Exactly. So it's absolutely correct. What has to happen, though, is the majority of people now are dissatisfied with both the Republicans and the Democrats, mm -hmm. and fewer and fewer people are voting all the time. We need a voting revolution is what we need. We need the people to show up and vote in numbers enough to get someone different into office, someone that cares about the people, that isn't bought out by the special interest groups, and uh, hasn't collected all of this money, and isn't sold out to their own parties and the different entities that support the parties, too. And it's both the Democrats and the Republicans. It's both sides. Right. They're, they're, nice they're rose both, they're glasses out. you have. What is that you smoking? That's good stuff. I should know. <laughs> I'm agreeing with you. You're right. I'm sure. You're right. I mean, you, I mean, you, mean, you, you are. are but you know, exactly. But you know, we got to understand. You're an idea, though. And, and, and we're not going to put you on the high spot because we got to understand he is running for a public office. Exactly. You, know, you know, so he can't come out. And we know, but here on, and this is what I love about the arena because one of the things, and even thanking Dr. Hunt for coming out because one of the things, the arena, it, it is go, geared towards, you know, an African here in America perspective and how these things, how politics affect us as a right. people. Right, exactly. And, and dress 
and to have someone that's running for governor to really have the candor and the uh, courage to come out and say, hey, look, I'll sit on the show, I will dress. You know, I want you guys as a constituency. This is what, you know, I'm going to do. Yes, sir. It takes a lot. It Especially does. on this show. Hello. You know, we get thirsty. <laughs> we get a blood bath at the times. But here it is. We are distrustful. And even in our voting, we still don't believe that the system is for us, will ever be for us, will ever free us and empower us. Now that's true. Thank you. you. Know what I'm saying? Not, right. We, we, we do believe that as an African people. And we have seen historically, we have seen that, you know, our distrust is not unmarried. <laughs> there is a track record. But, but there is a track record. But the reality of the situation is we are here. Right. We are here. We are here. We are in this country and that we have helped build this country, found this country, have contributed to um, um, whatever people, the greatness or the lack of whatever right. we have contributed We've to contributed. In this country. And that we as human beings, especially Africans in America, demand rights. So it would be advantageous for us to, since we're going to be, because like I say, even if you don't believe in government, gov government believes in you. Right. Get your paycheck. <laughs> Look at FICA and everybody else right. getting your oh, money yeah. out. So <laughs> government oh, yeah. believes in you. So one of the things is you have to, we have to be, um, um, uh, you know, we have to have strategies. And I don't believe in having, taking a non- involvement stance, letting just look going by the wayside. Right. So this is one of the things that even talking to Dr. Hunt and some of the things, we have to hear it from a political perspective. You know what I'm saying? It's like where I tell everybody, they say, oh, Barack Obama didn't, then I said, Barack Obama didn't run on the Black Panther ticket. Right. You know what I'm saying? So you were looking for all this revolutionary change. <laughs> right. and all this. You know what I'm saying? That's not you, have, you know, he has stuff. to operate within a framework. Right. So then we have to look within this framework and see at that point, what is going to put us in a position to start to be able to have some Cool Jacqueline, some self determination, and to do for self. We have to stop always be relying and dependent and crying about what someone else didn't do for us or what they're not going to do for us or how uh, they're going to treat us, but put ourselves in a better position. We have to ask a question I know, and I'm going to throw it back to Vince. When you were talking about mass incarceration, we have to ask ourselves why do we make up the, the majority of that? the disproportionate in sentencing. Right. These lobbyists that since prisons are privatized now, that you have these lobbyists uh, going in here, and lobbyists like any business. When you open a business, you need customers. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. yeah, part of that is our failed education system. Exactly, and that's the question I'm I wanted to ask. But has it failed? Or is it doing something exactly what they <laughs> wanted it to do? <laughs> here's something I want to ask. Okay. When you uh, ask him to address how would he have him Ferguson, he sidestepped it a little bit. He okay, sidestepped he, he it. You out, but it, huh? here's what I look at. And I said it earlier. The policeman who shot the young man, he probably had good intentions when he became a policeman. But when you have old pros on there, right. and you know we like to fit in, and they're telling him, if you want to fit in, this is what you got to do to that color community or that black community or that nigga right. community. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make no difference. Right. This is how you got to do them. It always, this is how you are got to do us. Right. We always, white folks always feel like we need a savior and we can't think for ourselves or we can't, we, we don't know how to vote unless we're in, being encouraged to vote. Mm -hmm. But the thing of it is, if you, the word if is hypothetical. Okay. But I'm saying this, if you were the chief of police, when you found out that this cop had killed a young black man, how would you have handled it as a chief of as a chief of policeman? Killed him and didn't even ready to call it in mm. to let anybody know that it happened. Mm. Ooh. So how yeah. would you handle that? I mean, well, I think you first of all immediately pull the person off and put him on unpaid leave in a situation like that. Not paid leave. Right. First of all, they, they have to understand that you know this sort of behavior from the get-go is wrong. Mm -hmm. So I think unpaid leave is a good way to look at it. And then put them through the through full process, the full legal process, and not the cover-up that was done. Mm -hmm. They right. worked on covering it up mm -hmm. rather than so bringing hard. it out. Yeah. Mm. And, and not till and not mm -hmm. till they know that they're held responsible will their actions change. And the way you can look at this, I think of it as just like a bully complex. Who do bullies pick on? Someone they can get away right, with it on, right? right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so you see these police crimes done, whether that's a black policeman or a white policeman, usually against someone they feel like they can get away with it mm -hmm. with. Right, exactly. That can't legally represent themselves. Mm -hmm. right. So let me ask you, so, I said, if you was the chief of policeman, but what I should have said was, 
do you feel that the chief of police room should suffer the consequences of his action because well, any cover up. any cover up had to be taken place. Mm -hmm. He supported it. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Internal affairs. Mm -hmm. You just like the DeKalb commissioner is going to be going to jail mm -hmm. for using the uh, spin cards incorrectly. We need to see that same thing in our law enforcement agency. Well, you got two supposed to go to jail. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got two. Yeah. So my thing, what I look so, at. So, so I think that's good. That's a good start. We well, got to get corruption out of government. This is going to help start that. You start throwing some of these people for their corruption things into jail. That'll help clean it up. But we need to do the same thing in the police. And if there's multiple policemen covering up a police crime, then all of those people involved need to face the consequences. Well, in my opinion, it's simply this, and I'll be straight up and honest with you. I think a man, if he served two terms as whatever position, governor, congressman, senator, he should be brought, he should step down. Because what he does, he's getting, he, he stayed there for so long, he think this is my seat. Mm -hmm. This is my thing. Mm -hmm. So what I look at is this here. Term limits. I like I term agree. limits. Okay. But what I look at now with Ferguson, the chief should be removed. Mm. The mayor should, should be, be removed. Mm. Half of the policemen had been there over 30 years mm. should be removed. Mm -hmm. Because you see, the old heads are the ones who influence mm -hmm. the young ones right. who come Teach. on. Teach. Right. They, they, when they come on, they influence them. Mm -hmm. It's like the reason, you know, to even today. So should should we fire most of our uh, teachers since some of these schools are so bad because of the uh, teachers are t telling the I'm new teachers? I'm glad you said that. I am. I'm going to tell you why. <laughs> I don't blame the teacher because I got a kid in my classroom acting up. Yeah. I'm blaming that mom and daddy. Yeah. That's who I'm blaming. Yeah. But now if 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 we're trying to get around and say the cheap the, the so called cheating scandal uh 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 is 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 what the teacher's done, well then I go back and say this. When I think of how we were denied an education, mm. but yet we, we are so slick to cover it up and say, let's look at what these teachers done. Mm. If these teachers done that, then the one who implemented, she was told to do that. And right, Beverly, exactly. I, right. I understand that. Mm -hmm. I understand what we are competing. Now, here's a young man from Georgia. You graduated from tech. That was a time a black man could even, he, he better not thought about walking over there at Georgia mm -hmm. Tech. Exactly. Right. But what I'm saying to you now, if you look at the system, how it is set up, we thought equal employment was going to be a thing of a, of a good idea. It was just on paper. Right. So <laughs> now, right. it's on paper. That's all. That's yeah. all it is. But, I've had cases where I was a union rep. And let me tell you something. When we talk about unemployment, I would immediately jump up in and tell them, say, look, let's forget about equal employment. But when you look at how the system is set up, no matter what you may say or what anybody here may say, right. the deck is stacked, stacked against, against black folk. A absolutely. I, I, I concur. Mm -hmm. I don't disagree with you. You're not and it starts with the education. Exactly. But, I mean, what they, 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 but you can't blame the teachers because well, no, they got a bad no, set of No, no, it's a system. You're right. It's the bureaucracy over the teachers that's part of right. the issue. And, but the teachers are in fear. But the teachers, man, I'm, yeah, I'm going to yeah, tell you, we, we said, right. I don't, I, we go on this yeah, teaching thing. Right. I blame the teachers, the system, and it's called selling out. Right. Mm, it's it called selling out. It it's is. called a paycheck. All right, let me say You know what I'm saying? Anytime, anytime, wait a minute, anytime, anytime that you put, uh, anytime you put, um, Anytime you put, anytime you put, take it. Your the 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 a paycheck over the well-being of the students of the people, then you sold out. Right. It's the bottom line. When we look at, we're always talking about equality, and we look in the thing, and we were fighting for equality. We are the only people that are always fighting to be. We're the only people that's always fighting to be equal with someone. You don't see any other people fighting to be equal with us. Equality. Everybody's fighting to determine their own destination and their own identity. Right. So that's the first thing. That we have to have real, that our teachers should have some real commitment and dedication to our students. Put the child first. Put the child first. And, it's, okay. and when you talk about that paycheck, when we start talking about a paycheck, we first of all, we it's too many scapegoats for us. It's too many scapegoats for our lack of responsibility and our lack of commitment to our own destiny. Okay, let me let me ask. Cause Man, it's good to see you on the show, It's brother. good to I'm see good. you on the show. <laughs> it's good to see Dr. Hunt. Good to see you, But Dr. let's get down to business. Talk to us. See, this is the thing. Black people, they just... 
They don't have a clear agenda, Yanga. Yeah. And we as black nationals, we got to represent. Represent this. Get it. Yes, sir. What do you want from Mr. Hunt here? It's a simple question. Now, for me, <laughs> well, you, you get ready to get with me, boy. Because <laughs> we're me, wasting too much time. What I want from Mr. Hunt is the respect of my ancestors from him. Wrong answer. Okay. Wrong answer. Go ahead. Something that we can all benefit off of as a society. Now what do you mean by respect? What do you want? The you respect is the, 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 it, it's acknowledgement. That's just really what. And see, when I say ancestors, that respects on you as well. Cultural respect, just like I respect his ancestors by uh, understanding that the gubernatorial race is part of the. Yeah, what, does that, what does that translate into practicality? When you say respect, right. because a lot of those are words love, respect, this and that. I don't give a damn who respects or doesn't right. respect. What does that translate into real time? Tangible. Yeah, something tangible right. for us. I mean, they well, got, right. uh, Clinton apologized for slavery. Shit, it's still the same. I mean, no. shoot. Oh. He <laughs> asked me a specific <laughs> question. He said, what do I want from Mr. Hunt? And that's what I want. Okay, respect. you want respect. Okay. Uh, I'm going to, I'm to, I'm yeah, going to give want. him let that. Me give me, let me jump in here. Vince, what do you want? Let me time? jump in here with yes. Mr. Hunt. We, 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 we hit this education point a minute ago, and yeah. I wanted to hit that topic because I'm a former teacher. Well, can, can, can I give him some respect a second? Please. Yeah, yeah, please, please respect please. the man. We are brothers in Christ. Yes, exactly. Period. That's, That's all it. they are. That's it. Okay, so get his phone. Oh, you got your phone. Oh, you got your phone. You got to get his phone. Okay. That's it. All right, guys. Okay. Now, what do you want? It's the ultimate dream of MLK. We are brothers. Well, the ultimate dream of the Christ, Yeshua himself. So, Vinny, you going to vote for Dr. Hunter or not? I don't. I vote for the creator. But his respect is what I would Vince, what do you want, Doctor? Okay, let's get back. Let's get down to business. This topic of education. Yes, I'm a former teacher in the Atlanta public school system. Okay, uh, I was there with the cheating scandal, the CRTC cheating scandal. I actually quit because of that. I wasn't a fan of the cheating. I wasn't a fan well of uh, socially promoting kids, pushing them through grades when they weren't ready. Yeah. Um, and so that became a problem for me. So I was on your website and you said you want Georgia to be a top 20 in the states within the next four years. So my question to you is how do you propose to raise the standards and the preparation for the students for K through 12? Because when I was teaching Georgia ranked 48 out of 50 wow. states. Yep. And that was 10 years ago. Right. Um, so how do you propose to do that, to raise these standards and to better educate our children in the system that we currently have? Well, first of all, if you know, sometimes you look around at other states that are running things better, and then you can emulate their programs, okay. right? Okay. The problem is, United States isn't even in the top 20 in education of the industrialized countries around the world. Mm. So we're best yes. looking at other places. Let's look at a place like Belgium. Okay. 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 They're a top 10, but they actually spend less per student than we do here in the United States. What is that social system? What are they, are they capitalist? Socialist. Socialist. Well, it's, it's basically, but what they do, you ready for this? Okay, right now about 70% of all the people in the United States want to be able to choose the school they send their kid to. Okay. You know what they do? They, the state, their country, puts the money with the child and the parent gets to choose what school the kid goes to. Okay. I believe in that type of program. I believe in giving the parents the choice. And you know what happens to the bad schools? No one goes there. <laughs> so they eventually fall off the map. They fall off the map, but they have to be taken over by other people because you know they don't get students. They you know run into economic hardship, and the quality schools will then take over the bad schools. Okay. So that's what you do. You give parents the choice. You put it there. Seventy percent of Americans want it, whether they're Republican, Democrat, or Independent. Mm. Now, what's kind of interesting is guess which socioeconomic group is the slightly lower percentage in wanting this? It's the richest. Mm, of course. The richest one. That's the that makes sense. <laughs> now, not a lot's lower, but right. it is a little lower. Right, right, okay, right, right. they're like sixty percent compared to generally close to seventy percent for all the other socioeconomic okay. groups. So, and I'm hundred percent in favor of this. Okay, mm. this is what we need. That's going to revolutionize it. That's going to make it. And then you have it that you allow different types of schools, so you don't have a common core system or a common dumb down system. Mm -hmm. You you allow it that you can have vocational schools, science, technology, engineering, mathematics. 
systematic schools, traditional schools, and you could have a you know a common core school too, right. but not the whole system forced to be one thing. Right. That's and the then the parents can choose what's best for their kids. Because mm. as we know, a lot of times you go on to college, all you do is get a lot of debt, and you end up with a you know the same job you would have gotten otherwise. Right. So you're a lot better off sometimes doing a vocational program and having a great job, a higher paying job than you would even if you went to college. So. Uh, we, we need this variation, we need this variety. So it's almost like a free enterprise system for the public school for system. The school system. Okay. Good. Now, how do you feel? Power about, in the people. How do you right. feel about uh, no child people. left behind? Because when I was teaching, I felt like no child left behind was the catalyst that put the pressure, like you said, on these teachers to do what they did as far as changing the test scores and the cheat and to get the money from the government. Because, you know, we all know if the students score or the school scores a certain percentage, uh, above 75%, I believe, then everyone that works at the school gets a certain amount of bonus money mm -hmm. that following Christmas mm -hmm. uh, after the test. So how do, you, how do you feel about the No Child Left Behind and do you think it's effective? Because for me, I thought it was the, the main problem with this whole cheating scandal. Right. I, I totally agree with you. I think it's a bad system. I think, once again, we need to get back to where principals are running schools with the teachers and the parents selecting the uh, proper and best performing schools. And we have the bureaucracy of the school system has grown at 7x over the last 25 right. years. There's a lot of money in there. Right. We get rid of all that bureaucracy with this system and guess where we put it? Back into the classrooms where it should be. I call it politics. Yeah, but a lot of that, um, what we're not discussing, um, a lot of those kids aren't eating. You know, if they're not eating right, that's affecting their learning. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. So, um, you know, that I guess that falls back into the economy fix. You know, yeah. you got kids going to school starving. They're not thinking about, you know, Christopher Columbus right. thinking about, I need a hot dog. <laughs> right. Right. So that, that's, you know, how, how do we fix that? You know, as far as, you know. Well, we definitely want the lower unemployment. That's a big factor. Okay. And, you know, we have the... Uh, um, Food programs that are out there and pretty pretty well you know extended. Most people are aware of it. And the for a problem for a long time was people didn't know about those mm -hmm. programs. Okay, I think it's that education has gotten out on those. Well, what but, is it? I'm sorry, ahead. no, no, pardon, sir. Yeah, please continue. Okay, so um, you know, I just like to see it that we have it that people understand the importance of the health of their children. You know, okay. that parents then, you know, see that as a priority in their lives. And I think that just needs to be good communication. Because if you look at this KIPP schools, they don't have the yeah. issue. Yeah, the KIPP schools. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they, they're some of the same neighborhood, the same families, and everything else. Mm -hmm. And they don't have that problem. How do these KIPP Which schools learn it here? Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm no, no, go ahead. Go no, ahead. no, please, please, please. I'm curious. Because my, I was telling my niece and nephew go to a KIPP school. And they say it is an excellent school. Right. One of the things so as you know running for governor and we're talking about like black sun was talking about the, the uh social cultural type of uh, uh thing in the, in the african here in the american community what do you plan on doing about and I, you touched on the earlier something like banning the box one of the things that create this type of environment right, is right, that convicted right. felons are not allowed georgia is a right to work state right so basically when you're in the right to work state you don't even have to tell me why you're discriminating against me or why i just don't have a right to work right which increases which for and then it just so happens okay you're a right to work state and you have the most prisons right than any other so i mean if i can't eat legally you know, and eating is a necessity. Right. You know, I'm gonna get it anyway, even though I have to sit down and dine and run dine and dash. Is what <laughs> you know, so even if I have to dine and dash, and therefore I'm filling a prison system because now I'm broken the law. So what do we do to when you're talking about? And the majority of this, like Gideon was saying earlier, is that the Africans here in America, the black community, is 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 largely targeted. We make the most convicted felons. You know, we're the most discriminated against in the job places a lot of times. So how do you propose to really start to? Is, is that something that's on the agenda as far as convicted felons working, as far as it's finding systemic. a way? Yeah, that's yeah, systemic. Yes, that's system. a beautiful word there, brother. Yeah. Systemic. Systemic, yeah, yes. you know, systemic so, oppression. Right. So how do we, you know, um, is there something on the agenda for that? or And then even in your advice, taking advice, how would you address a people to go to have that, to have to make that? 
and priority on someone who would be running for governor? How would they go about doing it? How do you go about if having lobbyists or interest groups or this and that? What would be your advice to that? Yeah, I, I believe firmly in giving a people hand up in life. Right. We all come out so far ahead. You know, there's these people that complain about the handouts. Right. And what I always come back to them, you know, if we just gave people hand up in life, you could cut out a lot of those handouts. It just wouldn't right. be needed. They need the excellent education. We need the transition of people, if they happen to commit a real crime, too many times they're put in uh, jail for what right. they shouldn't be put in jail right. for in the first yes. place. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and then, Plant. but then, you know, we need to transition them back into being you know, fruitful for society, happy people again. They, they served their time in jail. And now we just need to give them a chance to come back and you know, have a good... You know. And there, there are uh, actually some good systems in there. If you go to my website, okay. um, What's under the website? Some, the website is andrewhunt.us. .us, okay. Andrewhunt.us. And you click on the solutions, you'll see three tabs. One's job powerhouse, one's uh, education, and the other one's freedom and fairness. Okay. Underneath freedom and fairness, there'll be a, a list of different things. One of them is about prison and prison reform. Okay. okay. Click on there. Okay. There's some great details and some great quotes on there that you well, would really I like. I ask you a question. <laughs> Since we talk about fairness, you know, as an African American, I would like a jury of my peers. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. How would we? You asking too much, bro. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there is never such thing as asking for too much. It's, we nationals on here, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, that's that's cool. not that, bro. We need checks and balances. So that means more okay. people. Mm -hmm. Of course, I guess that would fall on us. We would have to register mm -hmm. to vote. Yeah. That's, that's in, in, in the Georgia Constitution, there is something called jury nullification. Do you mm -hmm. know about that's jury right. nullification? Absolutely. That's a very important tool that more people need to understand. Yes. Okay. That's where you decide that the rule or law is improper in itself. That's right. And so right. You know, too many times, juries are never told about jury nullification. Right. And it right. needs to be used more because we have a lot of laws that shouldn't exist. Right. Or, or the penalty is too high. And right. the right. jury can decide that. Right. Well, I'm not going to put this person in jail for this. Right. You know, can, can I explain this to the streets? Yes. Please. For the brothers and sisters, that means if you all have an all-black jury with brothers on here, we can override the judge. Let me say that again. We have the power to override the judge. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Hunt. Well, you're not actually overriding the judge. You're just you're 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 you're, you're actually just saying because the jury does either someone is guilty or not guilty, mm -hmm. and you're saying not guilty by jury nullification. Jury, okay, okay. Well, there was a case where the judge gave specific instructions, and the jury nullified it and said, you know what, you know, they were trying to, it sounded like they were trying to sway it to go yeah. a certain yeah. way. Mm -hmm. And yeah. the jury was like, no, we ain't buying yeah. that. So, I, and, and what it, you're it, saying it, is right, right. But there's a check and balance to make sure that that person's not getting railroaded in yeah. that system. And it needs to be all jurors that use this, not just... No, I agree. <laughs> no, no, I agree. I'm, I'm, because I, if, I totally if I'm agree. ever a juror, which right. will never probably be, it's <laughs> the, me, the only, but I'm, I'm going to use this. The right. only reason Unless why the person is a violent criminal and deserves to go, I'm, right. I'm not going to let that person go. Right. You know? The only reason why I say that, Hunt, because our people are so superstitious is that we be like, oh, the system don't work. Mm -hmm. We fired. have to be able, right. You guys have, have the be, power. Right. And we, you just need to be informed. Right. Yeah, so this we're question. here. Look at America right now. One of the degenerating aspects of America, and, and it's uh, really a global phenomenon, but specifically in the land of wealth, is uh, our health. And what I mean by that, obesity in America right now is at epidemic proportions. Mm -hmm. Many of us remember Arnold Schwarzenegger in the 70s that came up with this Exercise America plan, obviously a dismal failure <laughs> in the wake of the new electronic age of right. video games. Uh, I believe at this point the health of America is at a national security crisis level. Uh, but again, at, you would have to vote because, Doctor, <laughs> what you have to do, I understand where Gideon is coming from because there was a real life case where the people, the majority of the people, voting people, registered to vote, went against Monsanto. Mm. They lost. 
because Monsanto had that fun. Brain. So, yeah, brain. They got right, so what type of, and I asked you this question before, what kind of checks and balances can you assure the people, the majority of the people, going against the corporations? Because that's he makes a very valid point. Okay. Well, I think his point was about obesity, which sometimes is a personal choice versus a corporation forcing food well, down. Now, now, corporations however, have, sometimes give you unhealthy food. Connection right there. Right. It's a right. very valid connection. It all ties yeah. together. It yeah. all ties together. Yeah. Yeah. And how would you, you change that? Because again, uh, uh, capitalism and corporations fuel the political yeah. environment yeah. and yeah. fuel America. Yeah. I think um, education is a path to freedom of proper choice. So I think the education, I, I think taking sports completely out of education, which has been done in some areas, is yeah. wrong. Yeah, it's PE crazy. out. We it's need crazy. to have PE in there. I think arts is important to have in the schools too. Correct. And so I think we need to have this. Well, do you, why do you think that these individuals that have this similar background to you uh, would not think that these things are important? Um, I, it's it's a it's beyond me. See, it's because <laughs> what they're doing is by design. They know they're important, but they are programming the people the for apocalypse. Right. You have the power to vote for this man right here. Exactly. Uh, that's yeah. eugenics. Right. Here's my question. This is my question to Dr. Hunt, and, and it goes back to his never answered. I, I think that one of the things, too, is that we're talking, especially talking out here, because we're dealing with not just, you know, um, the black nationalist population, but we're dealing with African people who, like Gideon said, have a distrust in the system and don't see the importance of, you know, what is our involvement? Like, even me saying this here, we know that you and I know some. We're going to look on the comments on YouTube. We're going to have all their reformers. Right. It's going to be some crybabies out there. You no, know, I already want to just uh, yeah. keep our people from going to prison. Right, exactly. And we not knowing that we inside. have to, you know, regardless of what, like I said, since we're here, we have to participate. But my thing is this, that we understand that we are being targeted for these things. That a lot of times, like Gideon is saying, uh, with the obesity and I, because of our, the poor food quality choices in right. our grocery store, man, I can right. go on the Kroger's on right here on Ralph David Abernathy and then go to the one in Buckhead, apples and damn oranges. <laughs> apples and oranges, man. Apples and oranges. You know what I'm saying? When you go in our neighborhood, you know what I'm saying? You see all the fast food places lit up like Las Vegas mm, at right. night. You know, mm -hmm. McDonald's. I mean, you got we got four chicken places yeah. within yeah. a span of walking distance. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All the garbage. But you go to, but you go to, like I said, go to Buckhead and go to these other areas. They're not there because a lot of them, they don't let in there. So how, what would be your advice to a people? I mean, when we had to get down to the, the thing. Sometimes you got to be rough coming on this show. You got if if we don't as a as an African people here in America, we're not sensitive. If you say, "Hey man, y'all got to get involved. You guys don't vote. Say that we're not going right back. You know, hunts right. raises. Hunt hey, we need yeah, you to no, talk to us specifically. Is it our lack of yeah, transparency? Is yeah. it our lack of involvement in these things that we're being targeted to this and that? Or if not, or is this just going to happen to us anyway? Or you know, what I'm saying we need you to talk to us because we sit here, go back and forth all day. But what can we do? to change it and I think that that's what people would where you would get your vote from because people would say hey you know what there is something we can do and then they would if they voted for you then they say okay we put alright Dr. Hunt now we put you in here <laughs> right we're looking at our own don't let the system corrupt you Dr. Hunt don't let the system corrupt you so I think that that's one of the questions is our involvement is, is there something to that or are we just really just wasting our time just even dealing with this whole thing you know I mean there's a corporation as serve as long as you keep people. as long as you keep on voting in the same people that have kept you in this current circumstances right. you're going to keep on getting the same outcome you have to tell them you're not going to tolerate it anymore and maybe then the big parties will wake up and start to change That's but true. until you go out and vote and let them know I'm not going to punch the D ticket from here on out right. they That's have to know <laughs> that you you're, you're willing to abandon D for what's right for the people. So is a vote for Hunt us telling them we're not, we're not taking it anymore? Right. If you, <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you don't show up to the poll, they don't get that message. Right. right. You have to show up right. and you have to vote Hunt and then that <laughs> will tell them you're not going to tolerate it anymore. Right. And they know that I'm here for freedom and fairness. They know what I'm running on. They know the principles I'm running on. It's there, black and white, on my uh, website and on my Facebook pages. What's and here website? with you guys. Okay. 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 I, I put it out here. So I, I think we really have to do this. I'm, I'm here putting myself into public service to serve the people, all the people. And we need to make sure that everyone has a right 
to a quality life, just like it's in our U.S. Constitution. Okay. okay, well, we basically got two more minutes. Is there anything you want to say to, to the people to uh, wrap up your campaign real quick? Yeah. The, mic, the floor is yours. Yeah, I, I hope that everyone understands the importance of voting this year. It is so critical to go out and put your vote in. When? And not just, it's November 4th, November 4th. but there's going to be early opportunities. I hear the last Sunday in October, they're going to have extra polls open. Okay. Okay. So okay. you can we go to then that. too. Reach out to your church organizations, reach out to your civic organizations, reach out to whatever organizations and talk about this. Get up in front of them and tell them the importance this year vote hunt for governor <laughs> because that is the only vote for change you vote d you're going to keep on getting the d system right. they controlled georgia for a long time and nothing came out right. of it with the d okay. is you get the d with no vaseline and i represent real change i am a threat to the big parties you're a threat to I, the norm i am a threat to the norm and bringing back what our founding fathers wanted for us okay Okay. Liberty and justice for all. With a capital A on that all. With a capital A, I like that. <laughs> Sounds good. Okay. Well, I'm going to say it like this. One Just day you're going to vote. Close 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 I already have voted. Close it out. <laughs> We got to get ready to close it up. Oh, I'm just saying, you know, I, Dr. Hunt, you came here on the arena. Carter didn't, and Deal didn't, so they need to go down. Yeah. They need to go down. Thank you, know you Dr. Hunt. Yeah, yeah. yeah definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Appreciate Thank you. you. And mm -hmm. should you get in there, and you know, like I said, for my brothers and sisters who believe in uh, the political process, either you don't, it believes in you. Right. That's what I was saying, but put it, get out and vote. If you like what you did, check out Dr. Hunt's website. What's the website again? AndrewHunt.us. Check it out. You know what I'm saying, man? Let's get involved. African people in America, let's get involved. Let's make some real changes. Let's do it on all fronts. Revolution! This is the, this is the arena. Check us out on YouTube. Revolution. The arena. All one word. Spiritual. 2013. Revolution. Check us out, man. You know, and here at the same time, same place next week. I'm out. Yeah. Okay. Check it out. Hey, hey the I'm white out. man has Peace. never got anything through the vote. He already took what he wants. Revolution <laughs> is what it's going to take. It's Every a time. spiritual power. Every time. They see, you, you said revolution, see, then you you blew it with the damn wow, spiritual man. 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 He's a revolution. Don't vote. Go pray. <laughs> Don't vote. Send your churches and pray. And Listen, humble. man. You can't, you know, the you're not going to have it both ways. You got to get involved. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. We enjoyed the game. It's a pleasure. It's been the arena. Peace and love. Peace and love. Great seeing you. Peace and love. That is. You know what I mean? It's all good in the hood.